Hey, what's going on, Beowulf Nation? It's I am Beowulf. You heard the description in the video. This is a big second mod for my 2019 Yamaha GP1800R. Just picked up. You can see Matt Tuner X. Now, I just want to show kind of what it looks like when you open the box. I've already opened it up. Um, also, too, there'll be a whole new video. This is now running the Riva Racing Stage 2 kit on my 2018 RXPX 300. So, uh, the cool thing is this one programmer can work between both skis with different cables. And, um, you know, we got right here, like, I think this one's the, that's the Sea-Doo cable. This is the diagnostic uh, cable for the Yamaha. And then this is the one I'll set up that's for a 2018 and up uh, Yamaha's. Now, CDU, or um, Reva Racing's done a video kind of showing what's step by step. Now, the big thing that's different is the ECU on a, well, I'm not positive, but I would, I would guess the ECU is different on a 2019 than the 2017 and 2018. Maybe in 2018 they did it. I don't know because it's my first time doing one of these. But in the video, they show you how to remove three plugs. Well, there's only two with this ECU. Um, so you plug that in, and then you have two connections on the negative and positive of your battery. And let's see, where is the end? So this is what you would connect. This is what you would connect in the um, back of the Matt Tuner X. So I'll show you guys what it looks like. Open it up. It's kind of hard doing everything one-handed. There we go. So this is the programmer. Um, I want to show you guys this. I've already downloaded my stock tune out of here. And there's a bunch of step-by-steps that I definitely would think you guys should check what Reva Racing has up on there to see to do. I'm just kind of showing you guys because their videos really don't show doing it with a 2019 and how things are different. So I want to show you guys it. Um, they have a whole step-by-step. -step. You actually have, a, have to have a PC to do this. I'm a Mac person and I had this like really old PC and it wasn't, well, it's not that old. Probably from like, oh yeah, well, it'd be like, like a computer that's like maybe 15 years old. <laughs> so this laptop was like old, big old thing and I was like, oh man, I couldn't get to work. And I actually found an app, uh, we're not an app, a program, I think it's called like Para Parallel and it like basically makes my Mac go into this log where I have like Windows, the re most recent Windows. And I was able to do the whole thing on my uh, Mac Pro, um, my Apple Mac Pro. So I was like lucky. So um, yeah, so I did the whole download, uh, everything you need. You got to first put in there's uh, license codes you need to have. So each one has its own license uh, and they're not transferable. So if I sell one of these skis, I'll have to buy a whole new license. Um, so it's neat to have a whole new tune. And even on the my RXPX, there's like an aggressive one, the stage two, and there's a regular one. So I downloaded the aggressive one. So it has a quicker throttle response. Um, we're gonna see how these things run and maybe we'll go back to the regular one, uh, the stage two with my RXPX. But with this, they have one that's just a regular, um, but I think they had some where it was not any they have all different ones and they're all stages and they show the mods. So this thing doesn't really have anything done to it except for the engine air breather kit. Um, so that's why I figured you, before you can do any mods to this, you have to go this route. And it gets it unlocked quite a bit. I mean, it's, I think it's a stock. These things run 68 miles per hour. It'll run 77 and then it raises the RPMs up to eight. I think, um, it's like, uh, 8,500 is what I think off the top of my head. It's over 8,000. I know that. So uh, in stock, it's like, oh, I'd have to look at all this stuff. It's a lot of things to remember. Anyway, it's going to make it faster. Um, so I want to show you guys what this is all to do with step-by-step -step with this. Also, what I'm going to do in the video too is I just hit like basically 10 hours. So I have to do my first maintenance on this ski. So I'm going to do this a double video is showing you guys both how to change the oil on this 
Uh, it's a lot more complicated than c because c the oil filter's in the top. If you look here on the Yamaha, the oil filter is down there. Now you'll say, oh man, I'm going to spill oil. Well, there's a chance you might. First, you want to drain it all, but I got this uh, oil absorption pad that I'm going to try to get down in there real good and so they'll hopefully collect any oil that drips down, especially when you're pulling out the oil filter. It's already messy enough when you change your oil like on a car. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like in this. And my goal is to kind of make it clean as possible. You don't got a lot of wiggle room down there. But before we do that, I want to do uh, download the new tune because there's this whole cover that covers over all this. And I want to put that back on before I start messing with oil and all that kind of stuff because I got some stuff unplugged. So what you want to do with this tuner, so you have it right here. All right, now we're plugging it in. Loading up. And I think you gotta go to my vehicles. So we're going to, uh, I think it's here. Yeah. So we have the backup or the stage one. So yeah, sorry, <laughs> it's not 8,500, 8,500, it's 8,300. And I think it's, 7,000, low 7,000 is what the stock RPM is. No parts required. Down. Do you sure? Are you sure you want to select this? Yes. Download it in. Here we go. Stage one. Reva Racing Stage 1 being uploaded in. All this stuff does take a little time, so I'm not going to film the whole entire thing of this being uploaded. It's fast. All right, maybe not. Here we go. Now, the cool thing is having this thing already right off the bat. Um, it's ready for any future mods. And there's kind of with these, there's kind of like a step-by-step -step how I think I should be doing mods with it. Um, and also to like handling, changing sponsons, intake, change out the intercooler, uh, the whole figuring out what the best route is with the exhaust of which, what I, what I'm going to do with it. All right. So it has, so it's all loaded in, all seems fine. It shows here what latest downloaded program. So it shows here active system shows the date. So that's pretty much it. Just unplug that. That's how easy it is to just tune one of these. They got all the tunes, and they have all the ones by what you have um, done to it. Also, too, I saw they got some like stock race ones in there, man. It, like over like nine thousand something RPMs. Um, we're not jumping that too far until we get some other mods. So you guys got to just stay tuned to what's coming next. But definitely, this is nice to get this thing up fast. Maybe in a future video we're going to have these two next to each other, but I, I have a feeling though the RXPX is still going to beat it. Um, but it's nice to get this thing unlocked to where it's going to be a little bit more contender out there on the water. The interesting thing too that I just found out, uh, somebody, uh, Will with Reva Racing was telling me, is that, because you know on the R models, the 2019 is different than the 2018 and 2017. So actually the intake rate and the ride plate on this is the ones that Reva sell um reva racing cells but they're just not painted painted black um which is pretty interesting so it's kind of cool knowing that where you don't have to go buy something like that so you're one step farther ahead of what you need to have um with other modifications coming also too what's uh, crazy is in the intake manifold um they have this like i don't know like a ribbon that's in there now the 2017s you can just pull it out and stick the new one in on the 2018 and 2019, I'll have to pull the intake manifold out. And actually, there's a drill to drill this piece out of this. And it's real restrictive. And that's probably like the route, kind of like where I'm heading next. Because then you're messing with it. It's like you'll have to be messing around all in this area. So if you're pulling all that apart, it's better to kind of, if you're already in there, because pull the intercooler out from what I'm aware. 
is you have to pull the intake manifold out. So that's kind of going to be like the route where I'm heading. But kind of like my experience with racing, my race, um, the Viper Comp Coupe race car when I was in the uh, World Challenge Series, every car is different because you have like Cadillacs and Corvettes and Vipers and Porsches and Volvos and like everything. Well, to make them, and this is kind of like how all different, when there's different classes of racing all together with different manufacturers, they put restrictor plates in there and the Viper had this huge restri restrictor plate. So, you know, you put all the exhaust on it, open exhaust, you got the headers, but then you have this like, you know, cold air coming in with the intake on it, but they had put a restrictor plate on the intake, uh, on the throttle body, there'd be a, a restrictor plate. So it actually was like super restricted um, what air would come in and that's how they kind of, how they, the series figured out how to make everything even. That's definitely, um, where I'd have to pull one of those out. And also too, this Sea-Doo has something similar like that actually in their intake manifold. Um, Cause see like this box, there's an actual air filter in here. Now the Sea-Doo's, their box just sucks air into it, in it, but they have a filter that's stuck in the intake manifold that you'd have to drill out. So if it got dirty or whatever got in there, it'd be in there permanently until you drill it out. Maybe that'll be a future mod I'll do on that. I'm not sure. Uh, if I don't need to really go in that area, I'm probably not going to go in there, but you never know. So let's get ready to drain the oil out in this and then pull the oil filter up. Do the first maintenance. It's a 10 hour break in period. And so next time we go riding, next time I go riding, this thing's ready to rock and roll and put it through a fast pace and see how it's going to run. I'm planning on running it tomorrow. So let's get it all pulled out. Now, if you're looking for any of the stuff to do the first oil change, I have all the links on my Amazon store. It's amazon.com slash shop slash I'm Beowulf. And um, you can see here from the first, you can tell there's a little, little dark um, it's because it's the break-in oil. Also, too, I have, like, you know, the oil extractor and all that kind of stuff is on my Amazon store. And also, too, if you want to do the spark plugs and the oil filter and the oil, I have that all there, uh, the Yamba Lube. So the first thing you want to do is pull the cap off. I pull that off right there. Um, stick that down all the way down into the tube as far as it can go. So what you want to do is then start in a pumping motion. Start pumping. And you should start seeing... You don't really need the giant one like this because only two uh, personal watercraft or jet skis, Wave Runner and the jet ski. Uh, I have a bigger one. There it comes. Right there. You get it kind of going. And then once you kind of, you don't have to continuously sit here and start pumping, but you want to get it going where it starts draining it out. And then what you'll hear when it ends, it'll sound kind of like, you know, when you're drinking um, something out of a cup with a straw, you kind of hear that sound at the end when the thing's empty. That's what it'll sound like. Also, too, I, I'd pump it again. Um, just make sure it's all out of there. And then the next step would be putting this pad that I got down there and pulling this oil filter off. I'm a little nervous. I won't be smelling anything in a brand new ski. Shouldn't be no problem doing it. I got the right pad. And this is what one of these pads look like. I have a bunch of different ones on my Amazon store. You can kind of pick and choose. This one, I have to say, is a little big. Uh, I might cut it down, but then I might reuse it a bunch of times. Um, but it, the big thing is to get it down there and just where well, I don't want any oil. So this is kind of go for like 20 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and then get all to it, getting the rest of it done. I don't know if the camera can, you can hear it, but that's with that sound. Also zigzagging. <laughs> ECU is all connected. So the best way how I got this in or out is you kind of push this 
thing back in. And I did it. Alright, so got that all connected back on. Alright, so that's the old oil filter pulled out right down there. It wasn't that messy, which is shocking. Um, so I've already done it because um, it's hard to do everything one handed. Is I took like oil like this and you just go around this whole top, get the seal um, with oil around it, and then we're going to stick it on. I'll see if I can do this one handed. Now that's one thing I didn't want to do it beforehand is wiping my hands. This is a pretty good tool to get the oil filter off. Um, all right. Let's see if I can do this one handed. All right. Now you want to get this one snug. It doesn't have to be super tight. But you don't want it to be loose on there. Oh, it's hard to do one handed and filming. Come on. Just been really easy. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be like oil spilling everywhere. But pretty much after you, you siphon all the oil out of this thing, there's really not much left in it. Probably the hardest thing is just getting putting the oil filter back on. Get a rag to get a really good tight grip. Now, what I wouldn't do is, my opinion is, I wouldn't, other people might say different things. I would not fill the oil filter with oil, seeing that it's gravity, it's not on your side. Uh, it's pretty much what, what I would advise. I'm going to set the camera down because I, I want to do both hands, make sure I get it on here really snug. All right, got the oil filter on. Uh, next step is to be pulling this pump. I'm gonna do on one last pump. Doesn't look like anything's really coming out. Do two is pull out this pad. I cut this thing down real low, and look at it. I don't even think. I think there might have been a little oil spill right there, um, but nothing crazy. And the nice thing is we'll just use this again. I'll just set it right here. It is nice to cut this down to a smaller sheet and it's reusable. All right, so I'm gonna pull this out and then check on the manual of how much oil it's gonna be and add it in. So with the oil filter, it takes 3.87 quarts. Uh, this container, Yamalube, um, is 3.785 liters, which would be, if you see there, I it was a little over four quarts, so I did about this much. I'm gonna run it and see what it is and see if I have to add any. That's usually what you should do. Um, this is the kind of thing I use to adding the oil. Um, just letting the remainder come down, and then we'll stick the dipstick back in, and that's pretty much it. Pretty much straightforward. Oil change, I'm going to add a little bit tomorrow when I start it up um, before leaving to go riding it. So, it's the end of the video. That's pretty much we reflashed the ECU. Big gain, first break in oil change. Big gain. And I uh, hope this helps anybody. If you're new with it, also too, I'll have a previous video when I had my RXPX, not my RXPX, to show how to change the oil. I probably should do one on the RXPX. Um, do in the future if you guys want to see someone how to, how to do that. Um, but to end the video, make sure to pick up any of your Iron Beowulf merch. You got the hats, 
t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies. Uh, it's at imbaywolf.com. Also, too, make sure if you could give me a follow on um, my Instagram page. It's I am underscore Beowulf. Make sure you go check that out. Also, too, check out my Amazon store. It's amazon.com slash shop slash I am Beowulf. Man, it's hot, humid, and i um, trying to get some dinner to eat and uh, do some riding, man. It's like thunderstorms all today. I didn't get to ride. Oh, I'm so pissed. Um, but this is all ready to go, rock and roll, next time riding out. And this is going to be a nice video. It's going to be this thing blasting down the intercoastal waterway. Make sure you guys are driven to win in life. Make sure every day is Earth Day. It's crazy stories I hear about what's going on. Um, and it's not just to protect the animals. It's to protect the whole ecosystem. But primarily with the animals, just make sure you guys pick it up. I, it just, uh, It's a big deal. I hope you guys take it serious too. I'll see you guys next one. Peace out, Beowulf Nation.